All right, let's get ask them where they're from. Let's get yep. as soon as you get them going. Joe says we're on. All right, Joe, we got you logging in here. Thanks, my friend, for being here. We're going to give everybody a couple minutes to start logging in. And before we start tonight's conversation, we're going to be talking about impact. And um, some people call it the moment of truth. Um, a lot of different ways that it's called, the different things that it's talked about. But ultimately, it is when the ball comes in contact with the golf club. So obviously it's a very important part of the of the swing. So we've got people logging in like crazy. Hey, you know one of my favorite things right now is that we love to hear where you're from. So throw that in there right away. Let's start figuring out where everybody's uh, where everybody's from. We love hearing where you're logging in from. If there's specific things that you want to hear us talk about this evening, um, whatever it is, we're going to talk about impact. But if there's other things that you want to hear us talk about, start throwing those in the chat right away. Look, we got Minnesota logging in. We got Ohio. Hey, I hope you're golfing in Ohio. I know the courses around here finally opened up and we're rocking and rolling and this, it actually feels like spring. Uh, West Virginia, love it. Uh, another one from Ohio, there we go. We got Maryland, we got New York. Hey, we got somebody from Canada, Nick. We got our friends from Canada are coming in. Green Bay, what do you think Green Bay? Your quarterback just left, went east, went to, the, went to New York. What do you think about that? So. Buffalo, New York, there we go. Fantastic. Couple more, couple, couple more seconds here. We're letting people log in. The group is filling fast. Hey, we're talking about impact tonight. We're going to be talking about, as we do all the time in our live sessions, the bad lie right here in the book. It's kind of where we lay out the entire system, all the stuff that we believe we're talking about. My experienced golfers out there, if you're not afraid to tell us how experienced you are, what age you are, throw that in there as well. But tonight we're talking about impact. It's chapter 12. If you've got the book uh, out, you can go ahead and grab that. And like I said earlier, any other questions that you might have? Hey, we got our first one from, we got Mexico City, fantastic. North Carolina, Oklahoma, um, Australia. Man, we love it. We love our people from overseas. Matter of fact, what time is it in Australia? Nick, Nick doesn't know what time. Nick's too busy typing right now. He's mad scrambling, trying to get things rolling. What time is it in Australia? There he is. There's a thumbs up. All right. Start throwing in some questions before we get rock and rolling. We're going to also put a couple links in here tonight. We're running a special on the book. All right. If you haven't gotten the book already, we're running a special on Amazon. I don't know if it's the first time ever, but it's actually under $8. It's been selling like crazy. Um, maybe if you've already got it, maybe you want to buy one for a friend. Give it to somebody. Hey, and give us a review too. <laughs> Share some love. Give us a review if you like it. Nick's going to go ahead and throw that in the chat right there. So we're talking about impact. Let's go ahead. Let's get into it. You're here. You're ready to learn. We're here to share some ideas. We're going to spend about 15, 20 minutes going through this. And then we're going to share at the end. We're going to have a nice session that's available for questions and answers. Indianapolis, South Dakota. I love it. Australia, 1045 a.m. in Australia. Fantastic. Man, we love our people from Australia. All right, so here, here's what we're talking about. We're talking about impact. What is impact? Impact is the moment when the golf club comes in contact with the ball. Right there, we got our VLS golf balls. Right there, when it comes in contact, that is, in many regards, what we consider the moment of truth. That is when everything that we've done before that, the grip, the setup, the 60-40, the lead arm direction going back and up, right? I got to ask this question right away. And anybody know if you throw it in there, if you've been found any of our stuff, the arms do what? And the body does what? If you know that, share it and throw it in the chat. Start sharing some information. The arms take the club where? The body takes the club where? Throw that in there right now and help sharing some of the knowledge that you have. So what everything we do before that, that's actually happens with the impact. So let's talk a little bit about it. First of all, we're going to give you some of the key core, uh, key concepts. What should the arms be? Where should the weight be? Where, what should the hips be doing? Okay. We're also going to talk about what might traditional coaching teach us. 
Okay, what are some of the things that you've heard about actually impact position and what should look like? And of course, I gotta give you some drills. Got a couple great drills that we're gonna do. So first of all, we know what impact is. Now, a lot of um, coaching, instruction, whatever word you wanna use, there's a lot of stuff about spinning the hips, right? You watch these tour pros. I mean, they, they, at impact, their hips are really rotated. They're spun, they're way open, they're twisted, they're turning. I wish I could do that. It looks fantastic. It does help create some club head speed. It's not wrong. Spinning your hips is not wrong. But the thing that you gotta be aware of is once you start spinning your hips, which is one of the concepts that a lot of people teach in the impact position, is I like the hips to be way open. And for those of you who are following the vertical line swing, you know we're gonna talk about something a little bit different tonight. But when you start spinning the hips a lot, if the arms aren't working correctly from the top, if I'm in this good position, the top, I don't know if anybody put it in there, the arms take the club back and up and the body takes the club around. We've talked about that. The arms take the club back and up and the arms, excuse me, and the body takes it around. But from that top position, if you spin the hips hard, okay, where does that club want to go? It wants to go out. Now, I'm not saying it always goes out because there are players who spin the hips and it drops on the inside. But for a lot of golfers, if their first feel from the top as they go to impact is to spin the hips because they really want to get them open, the club tends to work out and across. Now, why does that happen? And this is going to lead into the first thing you want to look at when you're taking a look at your golf swing when it comes to the impact position. All right, so when they're set in here and their first thought is to spin the hips, the arms go out. Notice where my weight is at. I'm here, right? I've started with my 60-40. Everybody knows that. I've shifted to the trail side. I've shifted, right? And I've rotated, okay? And if I just focus on spinning, the arms go out. So the first thing I want you to think about in the transition, which is going to lead to the impact, is the first move should be a bump or getting the weight to the lead side. So that's the first cornerstone that I'm looking for and then I'm looking at when I'm evaluating a swing at the impact position, you got to get more weight into the front foot. Now, how much weight should we have into the front foot? Talk about that a little bit. Got some other people logging on here, Indianapolis, Australia, Florida. Keep telling us where you're from. It's one of my favorite things that I love to hear about is where you're from, all the different places from all over. But when you're hitting an iron, all right, you're gonna have a lot of weight on your lead foot. How much? A little, little bit of it depends upon your style of swing, okay? But for, it's, man, it's 70, 80, maybe 90% if you're hitting a wedge, but you're definitely more forward. Weight into the lead foot, all right? That's one of the first things I want you to take away from this evening. Now, why is that important? Why do you think that's important? Well, in some of the other live sessions that we've done, we've talked about weight distribution and how the bottom of the swing, where the club hits the ground, for, for a lot of us, for a large part, actually for all of us to some degree, it follows the movement of the weight on the feet. So what do I mean by that? Let's walk through this. So as I'm sitting here, if I make swings and, I, and my weight moves backwards towards my trail foot, where does the club hit the ball? Or excuse me, the ground. It's back my foot, right? What if my weight goes forward? Boom, see that? Where do I naturally want to hit? Boom, right there. Skip, nailed it right there. Compress the ball. When your weight goes forward, that creates a descending blow on the golf ball, helps you compress the golf ball, take a divot, hit down on it, and that helps get the golf ball in the air. So with your six iron, your seven iron, something like that, you might have 70% of the weight on the lead foot, maybe 80, okay, something to that effect, all right? Now with a driver, a driver could be a little bit different. It could still be a lot. I mean, you've got some tilt to the shoulder because you're hitting it up. But for right now, we're talking about iron. So that's the first thing. Weight forward at impact. We're going to get into a drill that's going to help you master that specifically. All right, there we go. JD is 77. Man, I love it. Experienced golfer, JD. How's the game, my friend? <laughs> How's the game? All right. I love hearing. We had one of our students uh, just the other day, Walt. Um, he's been in our coaching program for a long time. Uh, shot his age, Nick. Can you believe that? Huh? Round of applause out there, right? Any of us who are over 50, 
you know, one of the things we start thinking about as we get older is, could I ever get to a point where I could shoot or shoot my age? Uh, Walt did it. Huge shout out to him. All right. Number two, let's talk about the shoulders, the position of the shoulders. So we talked about weight, weight is forward. Number two, we're talking about shoulders, okay? With the shoulders, I believe if we're, for a lot of golfers, all right, not all, but for a lot of golfers, I like to see the shoulders, you know, pretty square to my target line, all right? Pretty, so let me go ahead and hold on one second. Let me grab something out of here. Nick's been working on our little studio here. This guy is handy mandy. He's got the, uh, got to build us a little shelf over there, Nick. He did a good job with that, all right? And actually, we got these alignment rods. We got some of these alignment rods coming, don't we? Yeah, okay. So we've got these alignment rods available. Where, where do they get them at if they want alignment rods on the VLS Golf? Put that in there if you wouldn't mind. Um, so alignment rods. So uh, these are really cool. We got these because um, they actually fold up. And they fit in your bag, which is way easier. That's one of the reasons we made them available for you because they're easier to fold up and move around. But let's say this is our target line right here, right? What I want you to feel is that at impact, at that moment of impact, when that golf club is coming in contact with the golf ball, I want you to feel that your shoulders are square to your target line or maybe ever so slightly closed. Okay, now in reality, they're probably gonna be a little bit open and that's okay. But that feeling of your shoulders being a little closed will get you in a better position. If you slice the golf ball or you come over the top, your shoulders are probably way open. See that? My shoulders are really open here. So I want you to feel like they're square to slightly closed. So what have we learned so far? We have learned that we want a little bit of weight forward because that helps us compress the golf ball, helps us hit down on the golf ball. We've learned that we want our shoulders to be slightly square, or might even feel like they're closed, but they're probably gonna be pretty square. If they're a little open, that's okay. We're gonna do a couple drills here to help us do that. Where else we got from here? We got Scottsdale, Arizona. We got Florida, we got New York, love it. We got people jumping in from all over. All right, now, next up, let's talk about the hips. And then we're gonna talk about head position and we're gonna get into the drills. So the hips, you know where we're going with this, right? So I've got my stance right here. You know, in the vertical line swing setup, we like the toes flared a little bit because it helps rotation and flexibility. All right, we also like an ever so slightly closed stance, all right? But at impact, I want you to also feel like your hips are pretty square to your target line, okay? We already talked about a lot of instruction. Traditional would tell you to spin the hips. Spinning the hips is okay if you've got flexibility and your sequence is dialed in. But I think for most of us watching this, my experienced golfers out there, is that at impact, to feel like your hips are pretty square is an okay thing. That's an okay thing, all right? Now, let's talk a little bit about the head position. If you got some questions, throw those in there. Nick is over here taking notes. We're gonna get to as many questions as we can here this evening. We got people logging in uh, from all over. We're learning, sharing what we love about golf, man. This is, this is fantastic. All right, head position. I think this is probably where you can really make some breakthroughs. This is where I would get a pencil out, a pen out, a piece of paper out, and I would write this down. I don't, if, how many of you were on our last live session? And matter of fact, if you like these, please let us know, put it in the chats, because quite frankly, I love to do the live sessions and I got to talk these, these turkeys over here into doing more live sessions, Jordan and Nick and JT and all the crew. I got to talk them into doing more live sessions. I want to do them all the time. So if you like them, please put that in, bombard them, tell them that you love it because we'll do more of it. But in our last session, we talked a little bit about the head position and the position of the eyes and how just the simple concept of changing my eye lines. My right eye goes down, my left eye goes up, okay? My right ear or my right eye goes up and my left was down. How that can drastically change the angles that we swing the golf club. So one of the things that we can do at impact is to just feel that at the moment of impact, you feel like your lead eye which for me is my left eye, is actually looking at the golf ball. Let me get a ball right here. All right. Okay, we're in here. To feel like at the moment of impact, like my, that my left eye is actually looking at the golf ball. Everybody see that? Who else does that look like? 
probably the greatest golfer of all time. If you know it, throw it in the chat. That would be a different look than if I came into impact and my right eye was looking at the ball. See that? So one of the simple things that you can do in your golf swing is that at the moment of impact, feel like your head is almost, it's not going to shift backwards. I'm not advocating it shifting or turning backwards, but feel like you're looking at the ball off your lead eye versus your trail eye, and you would be dumbfounded at how much better. You're right there. There's the answer, my friends, right there. Jack, bingo, you guys nailed it. Thank you for that. All right, so here's what we've learned, and let's talk about some drills, and then we're going to open it up to some questions. We've learned that impact is when the ball, of course, comes in contact with the club. A good impact position with a vertical line swing, okay, has a couple components. Number one, the weight is forward. It's not on the back foot. It's in the front foot. Everybody see that? Number two, okay, the shoulders, the shoulders are pretty square. They might feel like they're actually closed, but they're square versus way open. Number three, this is all in the book and the bad lie, like we said earlier. You can get it on Amazon. Nick put the link in there, okay? It's on sale right now. Number three is that the hips are square might even feel like they're closed versus way open. And number three, the head position is back just a little bit or feel like I'm looking at the ball out of my lead eye. Does that make sense? Okay, hopefully that makes sense. I covered all that stuff uh, in chapter 12 of the book. All right. How are we doing, are we holding up? Hogan, yeah, he was pretty good at impact. I'd say that, fantastic. For those of you who are just logging in a little bit late, thanks. Welcome for being here. We're talking about impact. Throw it in the chat where you're from. We love hearing from you. Love hearing where you're from. All right, let's talk about some drills. Here's my favorite drill to do for impact. It is insanely simple, and it works wonders. And that is this. It's just simply to preset the impact position. Preset the impact position and hit a golf ball. So it looks something like this. I get set up. Okay, I'll do this with my students, all right? And I'll get them in a good setup position, and I'll say, let's just create the impact position. And I'll say, all right, number one, move your weight forward so they'll shift their weight. I'll say, all right, number two, make sure your shoulders are slightly closed. They'll close their shoulders. I'll say, make sure your hips are slightly closed, and then turn your head back. Hold it for a count of one, two, feel it, go back to setup, and hit a shot. And you would be amazed you would be amazed at how your body has the ability to replicate that position. The body, the mind, the eyes are powerful. And too often, this is hopefully one of the reasons you come to us here at US Golf TV, too often we make this game overly complicated. It is insane how complicated we make this game. It doesn't have to be like that. When you visualize something, when you see something, when you feel something, your body has an innate ability to replicate it. I don't need to tell somebody, oh, get your 63.2% of your weight on your lead foot and close your shoulders 39 degrees. And I don't need, I just say, hey, weight forward, close the hips, close the shoulders, boom, feel that, hold it. Now set up and hit a shot. And it's a miraculous how their body will go back into that position. So that's the first drill that I give you. Number two drill, and then we're going to open it up to some questions, and feel free to throw those in there if you haven't already. Number three, and this is a drill we've used for a lot of different things, and that's just a little step drill. We know that at impact, the first thing we started with is that we wanted more weight into the lead foot, right? We wanted weight into the lead foot. So we just do the simple drill where we take a setup, okay, regular good vertical line swing setup. We bring our lead foot back to our trail foot. Let me go ahead and demonstrate from face on. So set up. Lead foot comes back to trail foot. It's one of the things we, I love about the alignment rods is we can do little step drills like this. All right, then we swing it back and we step and go forward. And that little movement pattern moves naturally the weight forward. Nobody would ever just keep their weight back or step and fall back. As they step, their weight goes forward. And here's the other thing. Here's the other kicker with that is when you step forward, it makes it very difficult to rotate or open up. Remember the first thing we talked about? First we talked about, right, was too much spinning of the hips without proper weight shift. 
when you, this is one of the beauties of, of, of teaching, is that when your weight goes forward, when your weight goes forward, everybody see that? When I'm here, when my weight goes forward, it's almost impossible for me to also rotate. So movement forward towards the target can also negate some of the spinning. So those two drills right there can really help us get into a good spot. All right, here we go. Let's open this thing up. Let's get some questions going. Let's help you play better golf. Let's enjoy this game a little bit more. Nick, what do we got? Yeah, so Chris asked, uh, he's asking about where you set up the ball in your stance with long irons versus wedges. Okay, so the question is, Chris asked, where is the ball position for long irons, like a four iron, something like that, relative to a wedge? Good question. Thanks for asking that. So let's go ahead and let me grab a couple clubs here. I'll grab my three iron and we'll grab a wedge. Okay. And we'll use the alignment rod here. And I'm, gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm not only going to show you where it should be, I'm going to show you how you can simply find it. Okay. All right. So where do we want it to be? Well, here's what we know. Here's, here's my wedge, right? Everybody see, you can see that looks a little different. Here's the three iron. Okay. With a wedge, I want a little bit more of a downward motion when I come in contact with the golf ball, more of a descending blow. With, with a three iron, I don't want to say you're picking it, but it's more of a glancing kind of blow. All right. So ball position ties into that. So when I want to hit more down on the golf ball, I want to move the ball back in the stance a little bit. So as I'm set in there, I would want the ball positioned with my wedge to be more right in the center of my stance. Okay, pretty much kind of right off the buttons on my shirt, give or take a little bit. Now, how would I find that? Pretty simple. What I would do is I would just put my feet together, okay, put the club down. I'd step towards the target, step away from the target, equal distances, and then I would know that the ball is roughly in the center. Now, with a three iron, okay, I want that ball to be a little bit more forward because it's more of a glancing blow ever so slight down, but not as much as a wedge. So I could do the same thing. So here I go, I put my feet together. Okay, I'm standing a little further away from the golf ball because the club is longer. And I'm gonna take a step towards the target, okay? And my step away from the target is gonna be just a little bit larger. So for sake of discussion, if I step four inches toward the target for sake of discussion, I might step five inches away from the target and then that would move the ball just a little bit Forward or center. So I hope that answers your question. Really good one there. All right, what else we got, Nick? Uh, Joe was asking about the setup distance from the ball. He feels like he's getting too close. Okay, distance from the ball. Fantastic. All right, here we go. Okay, so one of the things that why we got these alignment rods, you can see this. Let me just show this again here. So everybody see this, how they like they just pop like that? One of the reasons we got these too is because we can use it for teaching. So now I can make it a little bit shorter. So one of the things that I can do now is I put this down here like this right? Okay. And I can test and see how far from the golf ball I want to be. So let me go back. Let me use my six iron here again. But here's what you want to be looking for and distance from the ball. Obviously, different clubs are different lengths, right? Okay. We saw that right here. I mean, you, everybody here knows this, but you know, obviously, right? So the, the wedge is, of course, shorter than the three iron. But here's the one thing that's always consistent for the most part except for when you get into maybe the driver or some of the real longer clubs. And that is the position of the hands. When you're set up in the good vertical line swing system setup position, the hand should basically just fall right below the shoulders. Everybody see that? Boom, right there. They're not out here. They're not in here. So as I sit in there, okay, I just let my arms hang. So my hands fall pretty much below my shoulders and my trail hand should just fit right on there. This is the position that I should be in. This will help me find the right distance from the ball. So I hope that helps and gives you a little bit of a process to work through. All right, Nick, what else we got? Uh, two questions, kind of the same. Uh, Don was saying he can't get off his trail side. Uh, Billy says he's got difficulty bumping into the lead side. Okay, so a couple questions there. People saying, hey, I'm tending to hang back on my trail foot when I hit the golf ball. Very common, very common or I can't get to my lead foot, I'm kind of spinning out. This is very common. First thing I would ask is how's your overall balance? Okay, a lot of golfers, as we age, ex experienced, right? Let's be careful, experienced golfers, 
you know, our balance isn't like it used to be. All right. So the first thing that I would tell you, and this might blow your mind a little bit, but sometimes people stay in their back foot because subconsciously their brain doesn't feel like they're in balance. I mean, you're moving that golf club, you're twisting, you're turning, you're moving. There's a lot of stuff going on there. And if your body doesn't feel like it's comfortable or connected to the ground, it's not going to want to move a lot. So that'd be number one. Now, if that's the case, and that's okay, because our balance isn't as good as it used to be, doesn't mean we can't love golf and play great golf. You remember earlier, my friend Walt shot his age. He's in his 70s. He shot his age. Some of you on here have shot your age probably. I would say this. First thing is, is that make sure your stance is set up maybe a little bit wider, and also make sure you point your toes a little bit. By flaring your toes, not only does it help rotation, okay, because it increases range of motion, but it helps you feel more solid and stable. Just next time you're standing up or maybe, you know, just stand there almost like square feet or your toes in and try to move a little bit. You're going to feel like you're out of balance. Now take your toes and, and your heels in and your toes out, and now you feel like, oh, yeah, this is so much easier. So that would be tip number one. Make sure that you have the stability and you have balance. The next thing that I would do is I would think about this. I would do the step drill. Those are great. We talked about that, the step drill. And on the golf course, I would just simply focus on your knees touching. Boom. See this? When I make a good swing, I'm not thinking about my weight. I'm just trying to get my knees to touch. Boom. Knees to touch. And when I do that, that naturally helps get my weight forward. So I hope that answers your question. And more importantly, more importantly, get you thinking about why am I staying on my back foot? Is it flexibility? Is it balance? Is it is I just uncomfortable? Or do I just need to really retrain my body in the way that I want it to actually move? Hey, Nick, do me let's get another question up there. And then do me a favor, throw the link in there for the book because we're running a special on the book on Amazon. Throw that in there because some we got a lot of people just logging on right now, which is fantastic. All right, what, what's the next question? Uh, Brian says his practice swings always seem easy, free flowing, but when he hits goes to hit a shot, it's always uncomfortable and stuck. Okay, all right. Bam, you nailed it. All right, so Nick's going to throw that link in there in case you haven't seen it already to where to get the book at. Um, this is at the heart of it. Why is it that we're great on the range? <laughs> we're great in the practice swing, but when it comes to hitting the golf ball, we're not very good. You're not alone. Best players in the world struggle with this. We see it. They're just cruising along. No problem whatsoever. They got a chance to win the golf tournament and all of a sudden they collapse and they're tour professional, they're world-class athletes. So here's a couple things that I would tell you on this. Number one is when you're practicing, when you're playing, try to be more in tune with what is your body feeling? What's the movement feel like? All right. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, when I when I if you watch me work with a student in person. Okay, what, you would hear me 50 times in a matter of an hour say, what did that feel like? Where did you feel that at? What's the sense that you had? And what I'm trying to bring out, what I'm trying to grab out of them is the senses of, of how are they moving and how are they feeling in space. That's completely different than somebody saying, I'm getting my lead arm way high or I'm really turning my hip. Those are movement patterns. Those are thought processes. Okay, or worse, they're like, oh man, I'm just trying to hit a great shot. I'm, I'm, I'm trying not to screw up. I'm trying not to hit it in the bunker. All those types of thoughts cannot help us play better golf. So the sooner that you get in tune and in touch with what did it feel like, okay, the better off you're going to be. Now, one other tip I want to give you on that um, is this. This is a gem right here. Write this one down, Okay. That is, before you hit a golf shot, I want you to ask yourself, what is my intention? What am I actually trying to do? And it's not just to hit a good golf shot. Don't say that, right? Because then once again, you're going back to a result, okay? Because if you can stand on the driving range and hit good golf shots, and you go to the first tee and you don't hit a good golf shot, it's not your swing. It's not physical. Because if it was your golf swing and it was physical, you wouldn't be able to hit a good golf shot in the driving range, okay? But if you can hit good shots in the driving range, if you can make a good practice swing, okay, but you cannot perform, this is the magic. This is probably 
th thank you for asking this question because you can tell I'm really passionate about it. I want you to ask yourself, what is my intention? And your intention should be this. My intention is to make a solid golf swing or my intention is to be in balance or my intention is to be confident. Something that you have some control over, your intention is not to hit a good golf shot. A good golf shot is a byproduct of the proper intention. So I hope that makes sense. I know I got a little passionate about that. I got a little long-winded, but it's something that I think we need to be talking more about. All right, Nick, give me a couple more before we before we wrap her up here. Uh, yeah, we'll get into this one because that ties into that. How to regroup after two, three, four bad holes in a row? Mm. Uh, uh, skip that. Okay, I love this. See, this is, I told you earlier, listen, man, I need some help right now, okay? I need some help, right? This is why I love doing the live sessions because these are the things we can talk about. So go to our website, usgolftv.com, join our email list, send us an email, say, I love the live sessions. I want more of those because then I can win the bet with Jordan and Nick and Justin and, and our new guy, Gage. I can win the bet in the office and tell them we need to do more live sessions because we can talk about these types of Thing. So, all right, how do you recoup? Here's what I would say to that. Um, you got to, you, you, when you approach a round of golf, a couple things you got to be aware of. Number one is every hole is its own little game. You're playing 18, if you're playing 18 holes, you're playing 18 games. You're not playing one game. You're playing 18 games. You see it in other sports, right? They'll have the, the, the uh, coach will be mic'd up or the players mic'd up in the huddle. What does a coach say? He doesn't, he doesn't start out and say, hey, let's, let's win the next 48 minutes. Hey, let's, he, he says, hey, let's win the next 60 seconds. Let's win the next possession. Let's win the next two minutes or whatever. Break it down and think about your round of golf as nine separate games, okay, or 18 separate games versus the totality. I think that's first of all, would really help. Number two, and this is a real gem, this takes a little bit of awareness, all right? But that's part of why, you're, why you are here is that have some awareness are in what are the scenarios, what are the situations where your game tends to derail? Let me rephrase that and go through that again because this is important. Probably the most important thing we're talking about here tonight. What are the situations that are present when the round doesn't go the way you want it to? Let me give you a specific example this is a specific example for myself. I can be standing on a golf hole and it can be really tight, meaning it's, it's very narrow. And if the wind is blowing off the right, I'm a right-handed golfer, and if the wind is blowing off the right side, no problem. I'm, I got this thing, I own it. I could sit in the same situation and the hole could even be wider. The fairway could be larger. And if the wind is blowing off the left, this is a problem. <laughs> this is a problem. Why is that? Okay. That's something that I don't know if I'll ever fix. But I can tell you this, I'm aware of it. So if I'm aware of it, when I'm in that situation where the wind is blowing off the left, what might I do? Maybe I'll hit a three wood. Maybe I'll hit a hybrid. Maybe I'll pick a little bit of a different target. Maybe I'll give myself some more positive talk, some affirmations, some thought, hey, come on, Todd, you got this. Let's go, own it, let's do it. Whatever it might be. But the key there is you gotta be aware of what are the scenarios, what are the situations that are causing you to get a little bit out. So, all right, I hope that helps out. Nick, give me one more. Um, let's look at some of these great comments. Thank you, Brian, loved it. Colleen, thank you, love your videos. Man, we love you guys too. This is, I can't tell you how lucky we are, Nick, myself, the whole team here. I mean, how lucky are we, Nick? Give them a thumbs up. Are we damn lucky? Look at this guy. We get to share our knowledge with you and everybody out there and all of our stuff. What else we got? Uh, let's finish with a big stick. I have all a right. question on driver. The vertical line swing system, I know you'll love this one. Where is the driver head at the top of the back swing? Okay, so the question is, with the driver, where is the club head at the top of the back swing? All right, here we go. All right, let's get the big dog out. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to grab our Max Vert right here, okay, which is – oh, we even got the wrapper on these, Nick. I brand like new, it. Baby. All right, these pumper – these are brand new. All right, we just got – this. Our, all right, so this is our Max Vert driver. So we've got the wrapper on it. So I'm going to use that to demonstrate. Where is the club head at the top of the backswing? All right, well, 
couple things. Number one is the length of the swing. All right. So here's what I believe that for most golfers, that'd be parallel to the ground, right? Something like that. And that, that's a good position. Okay. Um, I don't really like this position where it's long. I'm not, I mean, there are some golfers who've played there. John Daly, he, he, he's done pretty well for himself. I'd say he's pretty good at golf. He's down there. Bubba Watson. There's some, there's some that have been down there, but for the most part, they're about parallel to the ground. So that would be the first reference point that I would give you is that the club should be about parallel to the ground. Now it should get there. And for those of uh, you who are following us and you and following the vertical line swing system, you know that the arms take the club back and up and the body takes the club around. Okay. So when I'm sitting there and I'm making a, the, the vertical line swing, the easy body friendly swing, the one that's easy to repeat, the arms take the club back and the arms take the club up and the body takes the club around. So I like that spot right there. So it's just short of parallel. Also notice where the club head is relative to my hand. See, it's not over there. You see that up by the wall. It's certainly not over there. If you get it over there, if your swing looks like this, you got to check out your wrist. Your wrist angles are bad. Okay. It is right there. And that's why I believe, just one guy, but I believe that when you simplify the golf swing and you just have the arms take the club back and up and the body takes the club around, you got your question answered. The club gets in the right spot. So my arms take the club back. My arms take the club up, my body takes it around, boom, and that club right there is in a really, really good position. So, all right, hey, this has been a lot of fun. We're going to be doing more of this. We're truly grateful. If, if you're having fun here at US Golf TV, if you've read the book, please leave us a review on Amazon or let it give us a note. Uh, join our email list at US Golf TV. Subscribe to the channel. Tell a friend about it, all right? Nick's got three kids. They're little, man. They're just getting started. Me and my wife, our kids are getting a little bit older. We're empty nested. Um, but we love what we're doing. We love sharing this. I love the interaction. We love the opportunity to get a chance to interact with you. We want to do more of these. So thank you again for coming. We look forward to helping you next time. And hey, the bad lie, the vertical line swing system, we're here to help you play some better golf.